Alien from 1979 on 4K Blu-ray. We did the theatrical version specifically. So I've had this toy my entire life. I know it's not from the first movie. It's the Queen Alien from the second movie. And uh, I got this when I was pretty little and I had never seen the movie, but my goodness, this thing was the bad guy in a lot of my playing with toys times. I had the Terminator fight this thing. I had the Wolverine fight this thing. I had all kinds of, I had this thing kill, just slaughter squads of G.I. Joes. Um, but perhaps the largest casualty from this thing is my mom's foot. Every time she would step on this thing, she would swear. And my wife just pointed out, I'm really lucky my mom didn't get rid of this. But yeah, this thing definitely like stuck its little mouth in a lot of a lot of my action figures heads. Also when I was looking for the thumbnail for this thing, there's this part in the movie that's like has basically a strobe light going like such. There you go. And straight up gave myself a migraine, so I can literally only see half of the screen right now. It's kind of awkward. Okay, I'm back. For you, that was only a few seconds, but for me, that was 24 hours, because that migraine got really bad. Anyway, look at this shot. My goodness. So, um, my wife and I just compared a couple of the... a couple scenes from the Blu-ray to the 4K, and there's a pretty major difference. So... The Blu-ray seemed like it had almost like a blue tint to everything and not because it's Blu-ray, but just because that was like the color timing of the Blu-ray. And the 4K seems to have more of a like varied colors in the side of everything. Like these, like for example, these ship models, they look a lot more like really big, large ships in the 4K. And on the Blu-ray, they looked like little toys, which is interesting because uh, in other movies at high resolution, you kind of see the flaws but it seemed like in the lower resolution and the bad color timing it actually kind of messed up how it looked so I thought the blu-ray looked pretty good overall like the details were really good and the blacks were pretty good but the like the depth of the colors kind of made things not look realistic okay look at this shot look at that so a huge thing that I love about 4k discs over blu-ray discs or over streaming is that when you're watching a space movie parts that are supposed to be black are actually a deeper black and then um the thing i love about watching space movies on oled tvs this is this isn't an oled tv I, that's a different one but the thing i love about watching space movies on oled tvs is just how how the blacks are truly black um, but on a 4k on a nice professionally calibrated led tv that has a full array local dimming it does a pretty good job as well but I also just like this shot where it's kind of showing their gigantic ship the Nostromo against this this planetoid so one of my friends I was watching the, this with he kind of said that this movie fits into an interesting category where it's like space horror but it's also like artsy and shots like this definitely let you know that that's that's kind of what's going on. So another big difference I noticed on the 4K versus the Blu-ray, um, other than the image is generally darker on the 4K, on the Blu-ray, the people, their faces just look more natural, whereas on the 4K, it's almost like they had like a, like just fuzz, just fuzz kind of breaking down the detail on their faces. The I'm always going to talk about this, but the, the grain structure of the film, because this was shot on film, and so you should always see Especially in the lighter areas, you should see like a tingly as the film's going by. And the grain on this is great. It's it's pretty light. It's not crazy. I think I felt like lots of times like I was watching a brand new movie, even though it's like at the end of the 70s. So they left the grain alone. So you see you can see it tingling in the background. Some people don't like that. On 4K, you can typically see it more. Um, but I think... I think you can just see a ton, just so much detail in every picture. It's like a freshly developed new new film image. It looks so good. And look at that young and smooth Sigourney Weaver. Actually, I guess later in the movie you get to see a lot more of her. But um, I wanted to say that the 4K 
this is a huge upgrade over the Blu-ray. And of course, it's a gig gigantous upgrade over any streaming version. So it's a big upgrade specifically in that the colors look better. Um, the, there's, of course, the more detail and then the and the lighting, like the depth, the depth of the light and the dark. It just looks more just looks more filmic, whereas the Blu-ray looks like they kind of just have the lights turned on. Like it's like before they started filming, they had one too many lights turned on. Anyway, it looks good. It's a huge upgrade. I mean, this blue, this disc's kind of been out forever at this point, but uh, this is how I'm doing the review. Also, sorry, Mom, for you stepping on my alien toy so many times. I definitely didn't do it on purpose, but I probably should have not left it on the floor so it destroyed your foot so many times. Sorry. Oh, I should talk about the sound. Anyway, so while these guys are having their soft but rough landing, uh, the sound on the Blu-ray is really good and the sound on the 4K is really good. I'm pretty sure it's identical, but it sounds awesome. And I don't think it really needs an Atmos, even though that would be nice, but 5.1 sounded great and it was still so creepy and awesome sounding. I love how this landing gear looks when it lands on the uneven rocks. It looks so cool. So the landing gear just barely made contact. Watch, watch what it does. That just looks so cool. I mean, so maybe it wasn't that gentle of a landing, but it looks like the landing gear is able to kind of land on an uneven surface and it adjusts. So it's just little details like that that make this thing awesome. I love this shot right here on the, uh, I can't remember. He had like some cool name, but basically the big, the big guy who's sitting in the chair thing the big alien guy who's sitting there, he has like this giant hole in his chest and it's like, oh, what's that? What's that? It looks like something may have burst out of there at some point. And it's like, ah, foreshadowing, so cool. Right here. So it's kind of weird shot, but like this is like the face and like there's like a breathing tube thing. This is like the shoulder. This is like the, this would be like the stomach because he's sitting in a chair. Anyway, and you see this thing right here, it's just like this big old hole in it. And it's like, oh, what, what happened to that guy? Oh, it's probably fine. Just p put your hand in it. Here's another kind of foreshadowing shot. It's kind of hard to tell what it is. Uh, but that is a giant hole in the floor that looks like it's been melted through. And it's like, oh, what what melts holes through floors? It's like, ah, oh, I don't know. Anyway, let's just keep shoving our hand in every, in every creepy place we can find it. And then later, if you're that one guy, you stick your face in an egg. Actually, I don't blame him. Every time I find a creepy egg of unknown origins, I stick my face right in it. All right, this this is disgusting. Look at that. Oh, it's like so slimy. Like it's just it's like so slimy and disgusting. Boop. Oh no, acid. Anyway, the the face hugger that was on that guy's face is like all just wet and slimy looking. It's just so. Oh, excuse me. The heebie-jeebies. Look at it. All right, so the strength of this movie, I think, is in the creepiness and the moodiness. And it's just, it's about maxing out in creepiness and moodiness at this point right here. So you got Dallas is cruising around in these tiny little scary tunnels, looking for the alien. And uh, and then unfortunately, the, the in, in my opinion, the dumbest shot in the whole movie uh, it happens that that I think in the director's cut they probably should have done something because it, this looks awful, and it's actually this shot that makes me not like the movie as much. Um, but then it's the entire rest of the movie where I'm like, yeah, this movie is really, really, really good because it has that like slow artsiness, but also like kind of fast paced horror mixed, which is and sci fi, really good sci fi, like, almost hard sci fi mixed with the horror and the artsiness. So it's, I think it's a perfect mix that I haven't really seen much, much copy, but without further ado, here is the dumbest shot in the whole movie that really kills the whole mood for me. Okay, not the dumbest shot yet, but a really cool shot. Look at that. He's like crawling in tunnels. He's got a flamethrower. It's awesome. Anyway, dumb shot incoming. Okay, I hope you have your space horror pants on. Maybe even a diaper, because here it goes. So yeah, that's that part always kills it for me because 
like he's gonna say right here. Bullshit. Well, <laughs> not right there. Right here. Perfect. Welcome. So he pretty much says that same line in the fifth element also. I think except for he says perfect being. Anyway, so it's like, it's this perfect being. There's all these cool shots of like the metal teeth and the mouth and all this stuff. And then you have that shot where you got Dallas, the you know, our, our leading guy with a flamethrower. And then it's just like, it's like, that looks so bad. <laughs> looks so bad. Anyway, that's my least favorite shot. There's a lot of amazing shots in this movie, but that one really gets me the wrong way. And I mean, look, look at this. It's not like the movie can't do it, right? Look at this perfect horror shot right here. Look at this thing's face, the shadow on his, on his face. And then look at this, it's like dripping and scary. And then it's like, yeah. All right, hopefully I paused it in time before I showed him get a face hole. So once again, we have a Ridley Scott movie watching with a cat or an animal watching somebody die. Just like in Blade Runner, when the when the owl's watching, when the guy goes and crushes his creator's head, and then in here, you've got the cat watching. It's like a close up on its face, and I wonder. I wonder if are both of them hearkening back to the owl watching the Frankenstein monster kill stuff in the Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know, but anyway, I just found that as an interesting parallel. All right, then we get back into the part that makes me go nauseous. <laughs> crazy strobe chase scene but it's like it's like perfectly scary here where you just see glimpses of the monster and the or the alien or the xenomorph and the the way it shows it to you is actually like effective like effective and terrifying you know instead of that stupid shot i showed earlier so Anyway, I'm not I'm not dissing the whole thing. It's just that shot is real dumb. All right. Besides that being an unfortunate freeze frame, uh, this this scene right here, I think is the perfect the perfect example of everything of this 4K disc doing everything right. So it's going to be showing um, flashing lights, movement, a flame. And then there's like fog and then there's dark areas and really bright areas. And it's kind of all happening at once. So I think this scene, it's right about one hour and 40 minutes in. I think it is the perfect scene to showcase the capability of this. And I'm going to show it. It's not going to really show up very well translated through the phone. But you get like the POV, you get the foggy stuff, you get her, you get her flame that she's got on there. Look at this thing. Yes. Yeah, so you've got mist or the whatever spraying out of the side right there yes sorry i just i love that shot and i just i seriously think it showcases the 4k perfectly and that it does everything right all right alien on 4k blu-ray uh this is a huge upgrade over the normal blu-ray and of course over any streaming um and the movie's awesome it has everything it has horror it has hard sci-fi it has awesome acting Amazing sets and miniatures and music and scary stuff. So awesome movie all around. And you should watch it if you want to be scared in space and have nobody hear you scream.